we all know kidney disease has become a hot topic now. And at the conference, Dr. Macaulay Onibo has been discussing how we can best use resources. In terms of classification and diagnostic approaches, there have been evolving strategies over the years. More recently, there's been emphasis on immunofluorescence studies to classify glomerulonephritis. Previously, most of the formulations were based on electron microscopy findings. But of course, as we all appreciate, whether the electron microscopy or immunofluorescence studies may not be available in certain resource uh, poor settings. And therefore, it's important to give consideration to other diagnostic approaches. Um, in an earlier discussion this morning in track five of the conference, we talked about the contribution potentially of such a simple test as urine deposit microscopy that can be done bedside by both an internist and the nephrologist to get a urine sample, have it spun down, and examine the deposit fairly quickly within minutes and potentially reach very significant diagnostic uh, implications for the patient. We reviewed a case where a patient came in and all the extensive studies had been done, most of the results were pending, and a simple bedside urine deposit microscopy revealed the presence of distorted or so-called dysmorphic red blood cells. And based on that alone, we triggered quickly, this was now in Vermont in the United States, uh, kidney biopsy done the same day, pathology report read the same day, and result of PAD findings, whether immunofluorescence, electron microscopy, available the same day, and we studied the patient on appropriate immunosuppression for P. anca vasculitic renal disease. However, my argument is that in centers where you don't have either easily available or it takes a week or two or three before you get the pathological findings, that in fact, based on that initial finding of clearly dysmorphic red blood cells, one can, as an internist, or hopefully still, better still, as a nephrologist, trigger the onset of administering immunosuppression even as you wait to either do a biopsy or get the report of the biopsy down the line. And what impact will this have on outcomes? Right, so the most important impact is the fact that a patient gets to start therapy early and in fact in centers where there is no kidney biopsy needles, no pathologist, this will mean a difference between literally renal death, ending on dialysis, and renal salvage. My concern is that in centers that don't have all those resources, then it's almost like the doctors get to a point and stop. I have practiced in Nigeria, I have practiced in the United Kingdom in Birmingham, and of course I'm presently in the United States of America, and I can very easily state that in Nigeria, for instance, and in such other resource poor settings, I strongly support and push for a move to use what is available to achieve what is best for the patient. And sometimes this could mean doing a deposit microscopy making a diagnosis and beginning to treat the patient even before, if at all, one will go to the full extent of the workup. Thank you so much for a really interesting discussion. Mm -hmm.